Hey guys, Mike here, the ED Troy Borg, with a look at the HTC One Max, which is kind of the big brother to the HTC One. This is a 5.9 inch display, 1080p, versus a 4.7 inch display at 1080p. These phones are very similar, they have very similar specs, they're just kind of a blown up version here. And of course we have that fingerprint scanner, which is one of the first Android phones in recent times to get a fingerprint scanner. This works a little differently than the one on the iPhone, which kind of images your finger. This actually just scans the capacitive characteristics of your finger. So it's a little different. You actually have to kind of swipe it in order for it to work. Now, uh, in terms of specs, same specs as the HTC One. We still have the Snapdragon 600 1.7 gigahertz processor, which is kind of old news now. Uh, and then we have two gigs of RAM. We have a uh, 32 gigs of standard storage. Uh, we have a micro SD card that can support up to 64 gigs. And uh, then we also have HTC Boom Sound, which is one of the big selling points for me, at least with the HTC One, are these very loud stereo speakers excellent sound out of this thing uh, of course the beats branding is gone because HTC has parted ways with beats audio all right so this is a Verizon review unit so it's already been open for me so I don't have a real unboxing here but I'll just show you what it would look like if you got this new uh, so the phone comes packaged for you it's kind of hard to get out once you get it back in there there we go so as you can see, it's a really large phone, 7.7 .7 ounces. It's kind of a thick phone as well, but to me it feels really nice in the hand. It's heavy and kind of cumbersome to use, but I have very large hands and it's really nice. This material is really nice. The aluminum and the heavy construction just feels really solid. Now we're gonna take a closer look at that in just a minute. So inside we have our micro USB charging cable as well as the wall adapter, HTC branding. And of course we have some literature. Uh, we have our SIM card, and then we have some HTC stickers, but we do not have a set of headphones, at least with the Verizon unit. All right, so let's go and take a look at the HTC One Max. So the interesting thing here is that we have very similar construction. It's actually very similar to the HTC One Mini, kind of the shrunken down version of the HTC One. But if you look at the HTC One versus the Max, you'll see that the construction is a little different. So you can see that surrounding the phone on the Max is this polycarbonate, so it's a plastic construction, more plastic construction. Uh, but along the side here, you have these chamfered bezels, so you have this more edge-to-edge -edge metal design as opposed to what you do with the HTC One Max, which I actually don't object to. It actually feels really nice in the hand, really comfortable, but you still get that nice, cool, solid touch of aluminum. And you can see we still have those brakes here along the back and by the camera as well. You can see our LED flash, same here. Again, these are the ultra pixel cameras, one with optical stabilization, one without it. And of course we have our capacitive fingerprint scanner. And then uh, you can see our brakes up here as well. Uh, you can also see our microphones, same location, same location for the headphone jack. Now there's another difference here. If you look at the top of the HTC One, the IR blaster for controlling your AV equipment is actually the sleep-wake button on the HTC One. That is not the case on the Max. It's just a dedicated IR blaster because they relocated the buttons for uh, ergonomics. Obviously because the phone is so much bigger, they wanted to reposition some of the buttons. So if you look along the right side here, you see in addition to your volume rocker, you now have your sleep-wake button just below that. Now I do find that when I intend to adjust the volume, I often hit the sleep wake button which can get a little annoying because they are so close to each other and it's always not always easy to discern which button is which so I do have a little complaint there now in terms of the bomb again very similar microphone along with the micro USB charger but otherwise it'll look very similar one thing you will notice here is that the max has these connections for an accessory uh, that HTC sells. Now along the right side you'll find this little switch here for removing the back panel so we have a spring loaded switch so we push that, it releases the back panel, and now you can kind of pry it off. So let's go ahead and do that. It comes off pretty easily. And if you look at the inside of the panel, you can see it's a nice milled piece of aluminum, so it's pretty rigid. So nicely made, you can see the friction fittings along the side here for connecting back to the device. If you look inside here, the one thing you notice is that the battery is sealed in, so you cannot remove the battery. We also have our SIM tray as well as the micro SD tray right there. And you can see our fittings here for snapping on the back panel. I find the best way to put this back panel on is to sort of line up the left edge here. Make sure it snaps into place and then work it back onto the phone. And there you go. Kind of have to push toward the center and it snaps back on. Now the one thing I did notice is that it still kind of has problems fitting in the upper right corner. 
So it kind of snaps like that. Uh, that's always the case. I can't seem to get it to snap back into place. And then along the side, sometimes if you haven't fitted it properly, this will stick out as if uh, one of the clasps is pushing on the plastic. So when you press the home button, it snaps in and out. So sometimes you have to fix that. But otherwise, if you snap it on right using that procedure, it seems to work okay. Now along the front, again, pretty much a scale-up version of the HTC One, complete with our stereo boom sound speakers, which are superb. They're even louder with the HTC One Max. This is by far one of the best sounding mobile devices I've ever used, so it's great for watching video. Now on the front, we have one of the best front-facing cameras I've used. This is a 2.1 megapixel sensor with 1080p video at 30 frames per second. Uh, it also has HDR video, and then we have our ambient light sensor and proximity sensor. And as you can see, we have a little LED indicator here for notifications. All right, so let's go take a look at our user experience. So this is, again, running Android 4.3 with HTC Sense 5.5. So it's the latest version of HTC Sense. As you can see on our lock screen, we have our date and time as well as our weather information. Of course, it's snowing. What else is new around here? And then you can bring your drop down shade to take a look at your notifications, which are expandable, of course. Uh, you also have your settings toggles, so this allows you to uh, access some quick settings, such as Do Not Disturb, which is a feature that HTC Sense 5.5 adds, which is very useful. It basically, turns off your notifications temporarily. We also have our fingerprint scanner, which we'll demonstrate a bit later. We have our quick access to settings and, of course, our brightness controls. Now we also have an editor in Quick Settings, so we can change what appears under Quick Settings. And as you can see, we have a big list which we can rearrange. We also have these other items which are grayed out, and that's because you're limited to 12 at a time. So I have to remove one of these to get one of these other features. So for example, I can go ahead and remove Fingerprint Scan and add GPS. So I click Done. It takes effect now if I go to the drop-down shade. There we go. Now if you see these three dots here, that means it will take you directly to the control panel for additional settings. So Samsung kind of does this as well. They will uh, do this. You can do that, the same action in Samsung by tapping and holding on one of these quick settings. So just tap on that. It takes you right to the control panel for more options. Now we can unlock our device and it takes us right to Blink Feed, which is the default home screen. I actually really like Blink Feed. It basically aggregates all of your social networks, some news stories and news feeds. So for example, my Twitter feed, Instagram, Facebook, uh, Google Plus, everything feeds automatically into this. So when you bring it down, you can see it basically refreshes it. So you get a little bounce effect. It refreshes your feed with the latest information. It also tells you your calendar events. So you can see I have a calendar event at, up top. So it's Valentine's Day. So happy Valentine's Day, everybody. Uh, we have um, you know our Facebook feeds as well. Now, if you want to modify any of this or limit what you're viewing here, just swipe to the right. It takes you to your list where you can change your settings. So you can see I have some of my topics here, which include The Verge, trending topics, automobiles, entertainment, lifestyle, sports, technology, and science, and then my services and apps, which includes Facebook, Twitter, Google+, my calendar, gallery, as well as my TV app. So basically, this has an IR blaster, so it does include your TV programming as well. Uh, and then you can just select highlights, which basically automatically selects it for you. Now you can make changes here by going to Plus. So this allows you to add additional services such as the Associated Press, Reuters, the Huffington Post, and other things from entertainment, food, etc., etc. And then we have other tabs here so we can select categories. Uh, we can select custom topics so we can search by topic. So for example, if you want to do Android, you can do that as well. Services and apps. Again, these are apps that can take advantage of it, such as uh, Instagram. So if you want to enable Instagram for BlinkFeed, just tap on it, and then you'll just have to log in to authorize uh, BlinkFeed to use it. Now, if you swipe to the right, you get to your classic home screen. This is where you can arrange apps. You also have your app drawer, which is where you can pick up more apps. And as you can see, they've already done a nice job arranging them. So you can actually live entirely in this sort of viewer here. You don't have to use your home screen to arrange apps. All your apps will be here. And you can arrange them. And also, you can hide them if you want. So if you don't want to see all these apps, just go to Settings up here, Manage Apps, or Hide, Unhide Apps. And you can select certain apps you want to hide. So that's actually very useful. I actually really like this system, so you don't really necessarily have to have two places to look up apps. You can just use your app drawer and keep your home screen free. But of course you have options. Now you have several options for managing your app drawer. So you can do most recent, you can arrange by alphabetical, or you can do custom which includes all the foldering. And then we have a quick access to the Google Play Store which I actually find very useful. Uh, so you can always know where the Google Play Store uh, app is just by uh, going to your app drawer. 
Now, if you tap and hold on the home screen, you get to this editor. This allows you to change which home screen you want to be your home screen and whether you want to turn blink feed on or not. So you can now turn it off if you prefer. So it completely turns it off, disappears, and now you have the classic home screen and nothing else. Now you can also customize your home screen. So right now by default, the blink feed screen is the home screen. But if you select one of the other home screens and set that as the, your home screen, now when you hit home, it takes you to the classic home screen. So you can get away from blink feed that way without deleting it. Now this is also where we get our widgets. So we can add a widgets to our screen or we can select apps or shortcuts. So let's go ahead and add one of our widgets just to show you how this works. So let me go ahead and grab the calendar widget. Now we can take it up to any one of the home screens we want to drop it in. Go ahead and drop it there. So there we go. Now we can hold it, move it around, and resize it. And if we don't want it, tap and hold it, take it up to remove, and there it goes. Now in terms of blink feed, if you see any story that interests you, all you have to do is tap on it. It takes you right to the app or website that it originates from, and you can read it in full. Now I just want to talk about our Android controls again. These are off-screen backlit capacitive controls. They're a little dimly lit compared to the HTC One. I think that's my biggest complaint with them besides their location. It would be nice if the home button was toward the center or all of these were put on the home screen or on the uh, screen itself. I, I tend to prefer virtual buttons just because I think they're easier to operate. But anyway, if we press the home button, it takes you to the home screen, back, takes you back. But uh, in order to get to the recent apps, you have to double tap the home button. It takes you to recent apps in this highly customized version of it. Uh, so you can see the most recent app is in the lower right corner. The oldest is in the left and you're limited to nine at any given time. So if you open up another app, the oldest app will be closed. And this also allows us to quickly jump to any one of them. And then we can also swipe them out of the way to close them. Now you can adjust the behavior of the home button under settings. So for example, if you tap and hold the home button, by default it takes you to Google Now, but I've changed it to bring me to settings. So no matter what app you're in, it takes you right to settings. But of course, uh, settings toggles or buttons will appear in the app. Now you can also swipe up on the home button to take you to Google Now. So you can see it quickly launches Google Now. And you can do that from anywhere on the device. Now let's go ahead and talk about the fingerprint scanner. So I'm just going to go to our quick toggle here to get to fingerprint. And now I've already programmed this for my fingerprint previously, so it needs to authorize it. So I'm going to swipe here. That didn't work this time. It had been working, so let's try again. And there you go. Now as you can see, it's kind of an awkward position. Generally you can find it, but you do kind of have to swipe your finger across the camera lens sometimes to do it. Uh, so it can be a little strange to use, especially with such a large phone, to find the right spot. But here you can see I've already programmed two fingers, my left index finger for unlocking and launching the camera, my right index finger for just unlocking the phone. Now I can program one more action, so you can program three fingers, three actions. Click continue, you can select which finger you want to program, so I'm just going to go with my middle finger here. And now I'm going to go ahead and swipe my finger. So let's see if I can do this on camera. Now once it's learned my fingerprint, I can assign an action to it, so let's click OK. So you can see we have a few things we can do. We can launch the camera, we can go to the home screen, we can launch voice assistant or choose an app. So let's go ahead and choose an app. I'm just curious about that. So let's say we want to launch Instagram. That's an app I use a lot. You should be following me there if you're not. So go to Instagram. So I'm going to swipe my middle finger and there it goes, launched Instagram. Now the fingerprint scanner isn't 100% reliable. So for example, my left finger is designed or set up to launch the camera app, but for whatever reason, I can't see, it just does not recognize it. So I'll keep doing this until I get to my passcode, which you do have to program when you set up fingerprint unlock. But for whatever reason, my right index finger seems to work all the time. Now in terms of apps that come with the phone, we do have some Verizon apps, which are in this folder here for us. Uh, those, of course, come with the Verizon phone, but we also have Amazon content, which uh, comes with HTC phones. We have Google as well, so all of the standard Google apps are included. We have our media apps, which include some Google apps. And then uh, we have a few other apps, such as the TV remote app, which I still have to set up. Basically, you use this to uh, control your AV equipment, so it learns your AV equipment, your channel settings, whatever service you're using, and automatically programs it. It gives you a little tutorial, so I'm in the United States. I'm going to enter in my zip code. So you can see the shows that are playing right now on your local channels and you can set up your remote as well. So this is where you have to uh, program your devices in so you can select which TV you have. I do have a Samsung. Click next. And then it basically will coach you through the process and it will run the IR codes to see if it works for you. 
So once it's learned all your devices, you're good to go and you can control your TV directly from your phone. Now, of course, if you need to get back to your TV app, just bring down your drop down shade and you have these quick toggles right in the notification panel. So you can mute your audio, you can turn off your equipment or close the app entirely or just jump right into the remote app. Under tools, we'll find a few other features, including our clock, our customized HTC clock. Then we have Scribble, which was the Notes app. Now, this no longer syncs to Evernote as it did with the HTC One. Then we have Kid Mode, which allows you to control what content you want displayed on your device while your children are using it. Now, we also have this Car app, which basically sets up the phone for easier use in the car. So you can see these large, oversized buttons, uh, your navigation options, as well as the phone dialer. So if we go to navigation here, this uh, gives you ways of searching for POIs, such as gas stations, uh, uh, things in Google Maps, previous destination, restaurant and dining, by photo, parking, cafes, bars, ATMs, that sort of thing. So again, large buttons for easy use in the car. But of course, you can also use voice navigation as well. All right, so let's go and take a look at some of our settings. So if we go to settings, you can see we've got this little bounce effect when we scroll through and we reach the end of the settings panel. Uh, so pretty standard stuff, Wi-Fi, Bluetooth toggles, mobile data, data usage. If you go to more, you get some more settings for networking, such as setting up a VPN. And uh, we do have NFC technology built in here as well. So if we go to that, you can see some of our settings here. So you can toggle that on or off. Display gestures and buttons. This is where you can customize the behavior of the home button. So right here, home button. By default, uh, it has swipe or press and hold for Google Now. I've changed it to swipe up for Google Now and press and hold for the menu. Uh, and also you can change your font sizes, brightness, screen timeout, notification light. So if you want certain notifications to activate the LED, you can select those. They're all, all on by default. Now you can also change the speed of the home button, double click. So if you want normal, slow, or very slow. You also have HTC gestures and the G sensor calibration, which you can all do from this panel. Sound as well. So this is where you can control some of your sound. Of course, they have eliminated the Beats audio profile. So that equalizer isn't here, but of course you can install your own. Now, if you go to sound, you'll find some other settings here, such as vibration, do not disturb, which you can toggle on and off also from the drop down menu. Change your ringtones. Now, it has two settings here, which you can toggle on and off, which are on by default. So, quiet ring on pink up, so it will lower the ring volume when you pick up your phone. Also, pocket mode, so it, it blasts the speaker louder when it's in your pocket or in the bag. We also have our fingerprint scan setup tool, so this is where you can go there to set that up or change it. Uh, storage options, so this is where you can see how much storage you're currently using. We have our App Manager, Accounts and Sync, Backup Assistant Plus, which is a Verizon utility, Location, Security, Language and Keyboards, Backup and Reset, Date, Time, Accessibility, Software Update, and About This Phone. Now under the Power Settings, we'll find our battery life as well as our usage history. So you can see what apps are using the most battery and we see our complete history and timeline. I get excellent battery life with this. I can easily get three days of heavy use out of this battery, so it's really impressive. That's including LTE or Wi-Fi use. Now the One Max also has a kid mode which you can activate by tapping and holding the power button and in addition to restarting airplane mode and power off, you can also enable kid mode, which I've not set up here, but this allows you to kind of sandbox your device so they only have access to certain files and apps. Now in terms of this display again, 5.9 inch Super LCD 3, so excellent IPS display with bright whites, good contrast, excellent off-axis viewing angles, very color accurate, a very vibrant, vivid display, but not overblown like an OLED display. So definitely one of the best features of this device is the display. That was true of the HTC One as well. Now it's not quite as pixel dense as the HTC One, so this has 373 PPI, by contrast, the iPhone has 326, while the HTC One has 469. So still really excellent. Text is pin sharp. Even the smallest text is absolutely legible without pinching in and out. So you can see uh, text looks excellent on this device. So it makes it an excellent e-reader. So if you wanna use this for reading text, it looks great. Now, as I said, we have HTC Boom Sound and these speakers are excellent. They're even better than the HTC One for perhaps the best sounding mobile device you can buy right now. So let's go ahead and test this out. So I'm just gonna load one of my recent videos. What's up guys, Mike here, the Detroit Borg, and it's finally that time of the year to take a look back at 2013 to see what Apple did throughout the year and what my personal top five picks are from that year. So before we get to the top five, let's recap, starting off with the 
So they're not only loud, I mean, they're not obnoxiously loud or blown out loud, but they're really clear. Uh, especially if you hold this device closer to you, you really get the depth of sound with those stereo speakers. So definitely a real good selling point with this phone. All right, so let's go and take a look at the camera app, which is pretty nice. So we have our filters. Uh, we're pretty familiar with plenty of filters. I'm not going to go through all of them. We have our shutter release, tap to focus. You can also tap and hold to uh, lock exposure and focus. Tap anywhere again to release it. Uh, so we can take our photo, we can record video as well. And then we can snap photos while recording video. As you can see, it adds it to the gallery. And then when we're done, go right to the gallery to see what we've done. So you can see we can play back our video or take a look at the photos we've shot. Now we can also enable Zoe mode. Now Zoe basically, when you take a photo, it records a small segment of video before and after the photo is taken. So when you take a photo, it looks like a normal photo, but if you go to the gallery, uh, you'll actually see it appear as sort of a like video a segment. Photo, if you go to the gallery. See, there we go. So you can get a little audio and everything with that Zoe. Uh, we also have our settings down here. So we have our scene mode, so we can select normal. Uh, we can also go to our drop down and pick other things like landscape, backlit, text, macro, that sort of thing. And then we also have night mode, HDR, sweep panorama, dual capture, anti shake. So we do have uh, sort of a software stabilization in here as well. Now dual capture basically allows you to record both the front facing and uh, rear facing camera at the same time. Again, this is similar to Samsung's dual shot mode if you're familiar with it. Uh, so that's also there as well and you can move it around. Now generally speaking, image quality is pretty decent. So for example, I was outside at night using the flash and it did a pretty decent job filling the scene with light and the low light performance of the camera made up for the rest. So if I turn the flash off, I still got pretty decent results in dark conditions. Although without optical image stabilization, some of these shots turn out blurrier than others. Uh, depends on when you press that shutter. So you can see this is blurrier than the next scene. So if I go to the next shot, you can see I got a sharper shot. So you do get more mixed results without optical image stabilization because uh, the, the lens isn't as stable as you'd like to see it. So otherwise, low light performance is definitely the highlight of this camera. Now just to give you an idea of the relative system performance of the One Max versus other phones. So we have the One Max and the One. Both score very similarly, which is to be expected because they're running the same hardware. Now the Note 3 is running a Snapdragon 800 processor, so we do get better single core score, but a weaker multi core score. And then we have the iPhone, which is quite a ways ahead here with uh, more than double the single core score and um, a much better multi core score as well. So you can see this is sort of mid range in terms of performance, but it still gets ahead quite well. I mean, there's no system issues in terms of performance. It's a really smooth operating phone, and uh, HTC Sense is not a heavy skin. So it seems to be well optimized and I've had no performance or notable performance issues or frame dropping in terms of the user experience. So really no complaints in terms of power. Now just to give you a size comparison with other large phones, the Note 3, the Galaxy Mega 6.3 and the Z Ultra. This is the Google Play edition. The Z Ultra is 6.4, this is 6.3. So you can see that the HTC One for a screen size is a relatively large device and that's because there's more device around the display than some of these other phones. They're actually, This is actually kind of similar to the Z Ultra which has I think a little too much bezel around it to be as usable as it could be uh, just because there's just so much uh, room in the way of using the display. So we have this large bezel which gets in the way and that's similar to the HTC One. Uh, but the HTC One does have, it feels a little more comfortable to use. It is slightly smaller and has those rounded corners so it was a little more comfortable to use. Also feels really nice in the hand because of that convexed shape as opposed to the flat or angular shapes. Now the Mega is still one of the better devices in terms of ergonomics for large phones. This is still a really lightweight, rounded and comfortable to handle. I actually really like this phone. But I think the biggest phone I can handle is probably something like the Note 3. It's about the right size. It actually feels small compared to these devices now. It actually used to feel big. Uh, but compared to those devices, this feels quite manageable. Now of course this is much bigger than something like the iPhone. So the iPhone is quite a bit smaller and that's understandable. Uh, the iPhone is one of the smaller phones out there at a 4 inch display. So in conclusion, the HTC One Max kind of lives up to the HTC One it's based on. Excellent build quality, beautiful display, excellent audio thanks to the stereo speakers, and a pretty decent camera. It's not the best camera, it's still I think too low resolution, but it's an excellent low light camera. And for most situations, it's still a great camera. It would be nice if it had optical image stabilization like the HTC One, but it's still pretty decent. And the fingerprint scanner is actually pretty good. It works pretty well. I find it really only works on my right index finger. Maybe if you're left-handed, it will work better on your left 
index finger, but for me, that's really the only uh, finger it works well on. Now, my only real complaints here remain from the HTC One, and that's the non-traditional placement of the Android controls, and particularly on a large phone. So the home button is in a very uncomfortable position. So every time I want to reach for the home button, I kind of have to tuck in my thumb to reach it. And that's also true on the left hand. So on the left hand, the home button is now too far away. Uh, so it would be nice if it was toward the center or if they put the buttons back on the uh, screen. And the same with the back button, it's kind of a far reach on the right hand, and it's also a little too close on the left hand for such a large display that you're gripping higher up. Uh, so I'd like to see them change this as well. And we still have the problem with the back panel, which doesn't quite fit as well as it should. Uh, but otherwise, excellent build quality, excellent display, audio, and performance. And of course, battery life is definitely a big selling feature here, and it's one of the best. So that's going to do for me in this video. Hope you enjoyed it, and I'll see you again in the next one. All right, guys, Mike here, the Detroit Borg, testing out the front-facing camera of the HTC One Max. Again, 2.1 megapixels, good for 1080p video at 30 frames per second. It also features HDR, so it's quite a decent camera. It's one of the better front-facing cameras I've used on any phone. I think the only weakness is audio pickup, so you have to tell me how the audio sounds. Uh, but I think it's not as good as something like the iPhone, which has excellent audio pickup. So let's go ahead and take a look at the performance of the main camera. All right, so this is the main camera. And of course, I have my favorite subjects, Zoe and Chloe. So they're going to be my stand-ins today. Hey, Zoe. So let's see. We have tap to focus. So we can tap to focus while recording video. It doesn't seem to do it automatically. Hey, Zoe. Now, this isn't the best lighting conditions, so you can see they're a little more variable and has a harder time with white balance right now. There we go. Let's see if it's going to focus for me. Yeah, so you do have to tap the scene to refocus. All right, so let's go outside in bright light conditions and see how it performs.